Hey guys, it's Elizabeth with erwplans.com on Instagram, erw underscore plans, and on Etsy, erwplans.etsy.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a ribbon effect for your planner. Uh, this technique you can use in either a passion planner or your amplified planner or happy planner, um, bloom planner, any planner, really. Um, I'm doing it in my passion planner because it's what I had on hand, but you can do really any planner this will work with. So let's do, we're going to do a rainbow ribbon effect today, but again, you can use any planner and you can do any sort of effect to this that you want. Um, the tools I'll be using today, I have my selection of washi tape here. I have this uh, ruler. The important thing about the ruler, I'll go over with you in just a second. This is a Westcott stainless steel ruler. And we have our slice cutting tool. A link for the cutting tool and the ruler are in the description of the video. Uh, first thing I wanna go over is the ruler, why it's so super important to have the right ruler. Over time, I have collected a lot of different rulers. We have this Midori ruler, which opens up and you can do angles with. I have that one. Uh, we have, th this is a newer purchase. It's got, it's more focused on the millimeters than on inches. And it has the little grid to help you with like bullet journaling. That ruler that we all had in school, that just regular wooden ruler with the little metal edge to it that you could like cut yourself on. And then T-square, which I've used in some videos. Um, all of these rulers have their place, have their advantages, disadvantages. The reason that we're gonna really use this ruler today above all of them is how thin it is. If you look, and I don't know how well this will show up on the video, but I'll try my best to get them all on the edge here. If you look, this, this ruler, the one that we're using today, the Westcott stainless steel is like heads and tails thinner than all the rest of them. If I have it straight up and down, it basically disappears. You can barely see it when it's straight up and down. All the rest of them, you know, they range from like a half millimeter to maybe like a millimeter thick. But for when I'm cutting with this slice tool, because the cutting edge here is just so teeny tiny. I want to have the thinnest possible ruler. Now Jet Pens has a new, supposedly even thinner than this ruler out and it hasn't arrived yet. When it does, I will definitely do a review of it. But as of right now, this is my favorite ruler and this is the ruler that I'm going to recommend that you use today. Um, and it's cheap. It's like, I think it's like $4 at Michael's. Uh, I think it's all for like three something at Joann's. And then like, I think it's like two ninety nine or three bucks on Amazon. Like it's not expensive and it's the ruler that I use. You can see how scratched up it is. I use it for like everything. So, and, and the best part about this is, yeah, it's got this cork on the bottom, but the cork doesn't go all the way to the edge. So it's really, really flat. It's really thin. We're gonna get started. Um, what I will do is just kind of give you an idea of how I want this to look. I want all of the tape to be kind of on about a 45 degree angle going down the top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of dive in. You can measure out, you can um, put angle lines in. I'll show you how to do that. We have the Midori ruler here. And this we can use to create our angles. It's hard to see, but there's actually these little angle markers on the top here. So I can move it out to about 45 degrees, which is right there. Then I could line it up like this and then just draw it out with a pencil. Like so. And then make sure to line up all of my washi like that. I can also make sure I know where, if I didn't want to use the lines on the paper, make sure I knew where my washi needed to end by lining it up with a T-square. So if I wanted my washi to end 
let's say right here, I could draw it out here if I was like trying to cover up that 6 a.m. Or if I wanted to come right to 6 a.m. here, I could line it up here. If I wanted to do in the middle of the today's focus, I could line it up right here. I'm going to be going right to the top of 6 a.m., give or take. So that's right there. And I don't really need to draw in a line because it's already kind of a line there. So we'll be fine. Um, and that line, the T square didn't come out completely straight. So I'm going to just do it again. There we go. So that's where I want my washi tape to ultimately end. Uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can have your washi tape kind of end in a, uh, a handkerchief pattern. You can have it straight up and down. I'm doing it on an angle and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to get started with this kind of light pink one. I have my 45 degree angle marked down. I have my end spot marked down. I'm just going to go ahead, trim this end up on my first piece of washi that I picked. I'm going to try to make it as straight across as possible. And then I'm going to pick one of the two corners to end on the line that I want to end on. In this case, I'm going to pick, I'm actually going to put it center like that. And then I'm going to put it right on my line, on my 45 degree angle line, like that. Okay. Now, if you're using the same one over and over, you can, you would cut it, pick it up, move it over. I'm going to just leave that there, move on to the next one. Get my tape started. Again, make sure it's nice and even or as even as you can get it. Figure out about where the middle is. And uh, the middle of the tape rather. And you can either do it a little off right to the edge or you can even overlap it with the previous one. And I'm just going to keep going like that with my washies. For this one, I'm overlapping it with the previous one because I want to make sure that this bottom kind of line here, or that these uh, today's focus boxes are all completely covered with my tape. Um, if that's not something, the kind of thing that bothers you personally, then you don't have to do it that way. You can leave the space if you want. It's very personal preference. Also, personal preference, you don't have to necessarily clean up the washi to make it all as straight across as possible because if you're doing it on an angle or if you're cutting it um, to be straight across, And really, uh, uh, this having the same angle and the same width are the two most important things when you're doing this. So, um, you can do different patterns. Also, um, another thing to consider is: do you want to do patterns, or do you want to just use plain? I'm kind of using a combination of both. Now you don't have to leave them on the spool. If it starts getting a little crazy like mine is, you can just cut them. And we will clean that up later. It works better if you use everything kind of the same width, the same thickness, but if you don't have them all the same width, the same thickness, that's fine. I'm just going to have a little bit of extra space here because I just didn't like how much overlap there was. Again, at the end of the day, this is really your personal preference. 
you can also try to make sure that your corner has a line. The best, the great thing about washi is that it's infinitely repositionable. So if you make a mistake like I did, take it off. You can always add more adhesive later. Again, just making sure that number one most important thing is keeping that angle the same. is if you go too far down to your line here you can always cut this to be the straight angle so if you don't want to cut it before you put it on you can cut it after it's already on now if it bothers you if all of your washies aren't the same width then by all means please make sure they're this then do the same width once again, I've seen people do this really cool with uh, different edges. I'm just more of a, oh, I want it to all kind of be the same. But you can do it like in a very uneven sort of way. And it still looks very, very cool. <laughs> so just saying, you know, you don't have. I think like I said, for me personally, the only real thing is just making sure they're all on that angle. And then I have a straight line across for putting these down. Okay. And then I get them exactly next to each other or overlapping so that they're all on that same 45 degree angle. All right, we've got all of our rainbow washi there laid out. Now, I'm sure you're like, oh my gosh, that looks, I mean, okay, it kind of looks cute, but it also kind of looks like a hot mess, right? We're gonna use both our T-square, I think. Let me see how that'll work. That'll work well. We're gonna use our T-square. We're gonna actually use our washi to help us hold our T-square on. And our little ruler. If you don't have two rulers to use, I'll show you on the other side and it, a different way to do this. I'm just gonna line it up right to that very edge of the paper. Okay. And I'm using the T-square to give me something to cut into. So I'm not just cutting into like nothing, I'm like just this, you know, space of nothing there. But I also want to make sure I'm not cutting my paper. And this is why we want the really, really thin. And then we have this nice straight edge used to help us pull off our washi, which is sticking all over my hands. And I will even use my little slice tool here to kind of scrape up like that. Okay. Now, if you didn't get it exactly to the edge, or if you don't have two rulers, the other thing you can do scissors and just go right along this edge here you're not actually going to push down so much it's not much like a cutting as much as it is like a uh, ooh, I ripped a little 
the one thing, the one reason I don't like using scissors as much as the cutting tools, because the scissors can rip it, as you see here, you can just kind of go along that edge there with the scissors. Let me find a sharper pair of scissors in that though. right along the edge and then you just kind of fold it down or come back in here just real close to that paper edge without actually cutting your paper like that if you're a super adventurous sort you can use an exacto knife or a, this is a generic brand exacto knife so to speak hold it up Put it right along the edge of that paper and then just cut straight down. As you can see, the my biggest problem with this method is it takes a little getting used to and a very uh, steady hand to do it this way. But if you don't have a straight edge that works well for you, do it like that. Mine's a little jagged. along the edge. So we'll just go back through and push it down, clean it up. So just be careful you don't cut your paper. And that's why I would totally, I always tell people until you're real comfortable using a slice tool or an X-Acto knife, use the slice tool. The X-Acto knife is sharper. But the slice tool is a lot more forgiving and you're less likely to cut into your paper. So that's how you can do it with just the edge there. And I'll take my slice tool. The slice tool, if you're using the slice tool, you do want to have something that you can cut into. Oh my God. So the tool, the two roller system, if you want to freehand like I just did, a run, one roller system will be fine, but it's not as sharp. It also doesn't dull as easily, so anyway. There's that. I'm gonna grab an eraser and get rid of my lines. As always, a reminder to erase in one direction so you do not rip your paper. In this case I'm erasing down to help keep the push the washi down. Now I mentioned that there's the issue of the stickers and the washi. Stickers stick to the washi. The washi is not permanent on the paper. As you saw it comes up fairly easily so if you stick your stickers to washi and the sticker doesn't touch paper if the washi comes up the stickers can come up and this can be a problem. Uh, there are two methods, well, maybe more than two, but there are two methods that I use to try and solve this problem. One that I have discussed in other videos. I just realized I want to trim this a little bit neater too. So one of the problem solving methods that I've discussed in other videos is cutting small squares out for each day so there's a small bit of the sticker that is actually touching the uh, paper. So in that case, I would take this ruler, maybe cut out where the little number is for the day of the month, um, maybe cut out the whole gray block. You could do it any number of ways just to make sure that there's that the sticker itself makes some contact with the paper. The other thing you can do is make the washi tape permanent. Uh, there's a few ways to do that. My method of choice is to take some Mod Podge put it over these stickers 
and then the stickers become permanently adhered to the paper because you've Mod Podged them down. And at that point, then you can go ahead and, uh, excuse me. And at that point, when you've Mod Podged them down, then you can put your stickers over top and they'll adhere to the washi and not move. The one disadvantage to doing it that way is that you're not going to be able to write on any of the paper that you've where the Mod Podge has been. So the one other thing I will show you before I call it done is um, I think you remember I said it doesn't necessarily matter if you go over your imaginary line here. I did that with this little sticker here. And what I'm going to do is just keep moving my ruler till I get to that line. Doop. That little imaginary line. And then I just cut this piece of washi. And I just do three light strokes when I'm doing it. And I just cut it on that same 45 degree angle that we mentioned before. And then we can cut that up. And now everybody's even all the way across. So my day would start with seven o'clock and it's not all kind of weird and reaching into my other days. So those are your two options as far as making sure that the stickers will stick. Either make sure your washi will stick. Another option is you can put down some sort of adhesive before you put your, or when you put your washi down, pull up each strip individually, put some adhesive down, and then put the washi back down over it. That's an option. Um, like I said, Mod Podge over it, another option. All right, so this is my Mod Podge. Mine has some glitter in it. Um, so I've been sitting here like, do I really wanna put the Mod Podge on when it's got this glitter in it? And the answer I think is yes, because I mean, what source it happens, right? It's a little glittery. So I'm gonna use a very thin, very small brush here to get it out. I'm gonna put my ruler right against that line that we drew earlier that I've erased off now. All right. I'm just gonna go over and seal it on. And like I said, this will help my stickers adhere, and it's not super duper glittery, so it's fine. Like just a tiny, tiny amount, just enough to seal my washi and help it adhere. And again, you don't have to do it this way. There is another way. <laughs> uh, you can do it where you've cut out the days of the week and then stick her down over top of those. I've showed you in a few other videos, a few plan with me's how to do that. But I figured, you know, like I thought about the whole glitter thing. Like, do I want to do it? It's got glitter in it. And at the end of the day, my thought process was, yes, I totally want to do that. I mean, it's a rainbow setup here with a little glitter. You know, it's not super glittery anyway, as you can see here. Just a little glittery, just a little sparkle, sparkle, something, something. And again, just tiny, thin brush, tiny, thin coat of the Mod Podge. And you just want to make sure, like I said, if there's anything, any lines that need to be erased, erase those first. So once the Mod Podge goes on, whatever's there stays there forever. Not necessarily forever, but you know, it feels like forever. Now, if you're like me and you want to seal your edges, totally a reasonable thing to do. Just make sure you've lifted it up from the next week. it up from the next week, put something underneath so it doesn't lay flat against the next week. And then do the same over here. 
This is how I do my nails too, just like in case you're like, why would you steal your edges? I always steal the ends of my, my edges of my nails when I do my own manicures too. Just helps keep everything sealed together really nice and neat. Like so. And then something with a little bit of heft to it so it doesn't lay flat against the other page. And we'll clean up and let that dry. There we have it, our rainbow washi cover in our planner. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and share the video with your friends. We go live on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. However, sometimes Passion Planner drops uh, things in the middle of the week uh, when we don't have it uh, where we can go live at 7 a.m. Sometimes you have to wait until 10 a.m. when Passion Planner's new drops go live so we can discuss them, like last week. Uh, so the best thing to do is make sure to subscribe. That way you'll get a notification anytime we go live. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider becoming a patron. All of the products you see are not I don't get them for free. I uh, This is not sponsored content. Everything I have to buy myself. So when you become a patron, you help me make more creative videos and buy more washi and Mod Podge. So please consider being a patron. It, only, it starts at only a dollar a month. Again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week. Enjoy the next video.